Hey everyone, um, this is the third video I'm doing, if you're going in order, um, of the derivation of the continuity equation or the conservation of mass equation. Uh, in this one I'm going to be using another one of the four flow models, uh, and I'm going to be using the finite control volume fixed in space, um, which I have drawn here in this green figure. Um, so I've drawn this like arbitrary shape um, of volume V. I've also drawn two more things. I have one, the first thing up here is a surface. So if you can imagine, I'll be using this kind of description uh, throughout this video, imagine a balloon that's permeable to, you know, kind of air going through it or fluid going through it. Um, so this, this piece up here, this surface piece, is like a, if you cut a piece of the balloon off, that thing that you're holding, that's the surface. Um, and then I also drew a finite element uh, in here as well. And that's like taking a chunk in the middle of the balloon, a chunk of like air, and just calling that your little fixed fluid element, or fluid element. Um, and that has a volume dV. So the other things coming out of the surface up here is an arbitrary velocity vector. Um, so whatever, whatever um, velocity vector that the flow is coming out, passing through that surface, that's what this V is, um, which has the i, j, and k components in Cartesian coordinates. Um, the other thing is the surface, um, the surface, elemental surface ds is the surface area of this surface element. Okay, so the physical, what the conservation of mass equation is physically saying is that the net mass flow out of the control volume through the surface, and I call this the left hand side, is equal to the time rate of change of the mass inside the control volume, which is the right-hand side. So if you think of the balloon, then the left-hand side here is the net mass flow out of the control volume, so whatever's flowing through the balloon surface is the left-hand side. And then what you can also have is the time rate of change of the mass inside, so how much is the mass changing inside of this balloon. So, um, so I guess another way you can think about it is if I'm blowing up a balloon, uh, I, this isn't the greatest way to think about it, but if I'm blowing up a balloon and the balloon is permeable to air, essentially, I can be blowing it up, it'll, it'll stay the same size, and I'll be blowing it up, but it'll stay the same size, which means I'm increasing, I'm increasing the mass inside the control volume by blowing into it, but there's also this net mass flow out that's conserving the mass that's fixed inside of this balloon. Um, so first we need the mass flow which is going to be in uh, units of kilograms per second. So we need a density times the normal velocity component out of this control surface times the area of the control surface. So the density is in kilograms per meter cubed, the velocity is in meters per second, and the area is in meters squared, so we end up getting kilograms per second <coughs> for the mass flow. Um, you can write it in the vector form here uh, as the density times the velocity vector dotted with the area. Um, since the velocity vector is, uh, okay, so if the, the, the surface area ds is always pointing outwards, uh, so like out of the balloon um, from the surface, the velocity vector can either be going in or it can be going out. Uh, when you take the dot product, if since the ds is pointing out and you take the dot product of the velocity vector going out and the and the surface ds surface area ds you'll get positive which means outflow is positive if the velocity vector is going into the surface it'll be the opposite direction as ds and you'll get the dot product will be negative so we have positive for outflow which is what we want from this thing here so we have the net mass flow out which will be this positive um, okay so the left hand side ends up being the integral the double integral because we're doing a surface not a triple integral for the volume, but the double integral for the surface of the mass flow. So the net mass flow out of the control volume through the surface, S. That is this term right here. Okay, now moving on to the right side, we have the time rate of change of the mass inside the control volume. So we need, uh, so we need to say what the mass is inside the control volume. So I drew this differential fluid element here. The mass of this is going to be, the mass of this fluid element is going to be rho, so the density times the dv, the volume, right, because we have kilograms per meter cubed times meters cubed gives us kilograms, so that's the mass inside this fluid element. 
to get it inside the finite control volume, we just integrate over the volume. So that's why we have the triple integral over the volume of the mass of this element. So what this is saying, this term here, is the mass inside the control volume. Right? So the right-hand side is the time rate of change of mass. So all we need to do is put a time derivative, partial derivative, in front of this mass of the control volume, and we get the time rate of change of the mass inside the control volume. Um, a decrease is going to be negative, an increase is positive, a decrease is negative. So what I do is I skip a little step here for sake of saving room, and the I tried to color code it, but I guess I didn't color code the top here. But the so the left hand side is this. So the left hand side was uh, this integral, so the net mass flow out of the CV, and then on the other side we have the we have the time rate of change of mass um, inside uh, the control volume. And since it's a it's a time rate of decrease, I didn't put that up there. But it's a time rate of decrease of the mass inside, um, because if you have something flowing out. That means you want to have whatever is in there, whatever is inside the control line is going to be decreasing. So on the right hand side, so ignore this, on the right hand side I would have a negative this term because it's decreasing. So then what I did was I just brought it over to the other side by adding it to both sides and that's why I have positive over here. So I have the time rate, this is the time rate of increase um, or the time rate of change of the mass inside the control volume plus the net mass flow out. So what we're doing is like inside the balloon we have, since this, these are both addition, we have the time, so the time rate of increase of mass inside the control volume. We're increasing the control volume and then we have the net mass flow out of the control volume. So it's balancing. So the increase in the balloon is balanced by the outflow from the balloon. Um, and this gives you, since you can see the integrals here, it gives you the integral form um, of the conservation of moment or of mass, uh, which is also the conservation form as opposed to the, or the conservative form as opposed to the non-conservative non form. So the integral form comes about because we use the finite control volume and the conservation form uh, is because it's fixed in space as opposed to moving. Um, so the next video that I'll be doing is the finite control volume, uh, no, it'll be the differential control volume, or the finite, infinitesimally small uh, fluid element fixed in space. Uh, thank you for watching.